AI chatbots. Everyone needs one, but where do you get one? When you're finished with this video, you'll understand how I built this here. I'll even deep dive into the Jupyter notebooks that I use for the data science pieces, which are now open source. And I'll talk through uh, exactly how this is built end to end. Let's begin with a short demo. Uh, so what can this chatbot actually do? Uh, if you're familiar with ChatGPT, it's very similar, although it's going to answer as though it is Michael Scott. Uh, so you can ask it any question relevant to the series. And hit enter and it will noodle on it for a little bit and you will get back an answer. Uh, and so in this case, uh, we asked, why did you play the Savannah murder game? And uh, for fans of the show, if you read through, that's a pretty accurate response. I played the Savannah murder game because I'm a master of improvisation, quick thinking. Staff was worried about financial troubles. And so instead I needed to turn to this party game, Bells, Bourbon and Bullets. Um, if you click this little button here, uh, the UX needs to be improved. But in the background, um, you'll actually get a spoken version of this response, um, spoken in the voice of the one and only Michael Scott. Well, you see, the reason I played the Savannah murder game is because I am a master of improvisation and quick thinking. When the staff was all worried about the financial troubles at Dunder Mifflin, I knew I had to do something to lighten the mood. So this is uh, fun enough in its own right. You can ask uh, and questions about other characters or uh, other details of the series. You can ask about particular episodes. You can ask questions that cross cut multiple seasons and episodes. Um, and you will get a, a pretty factually on the money response. Start with a quick overview of how this uh, app actually works. Uh, so we are using an LLM or a large language model. Uh, if you've heard of ChatGPT 3, 3.5 or ChatGPT 4, uh, that's what that's referring to. In addition, um, we're going to ask a question uh, that we ultimately want our LLM to answer. Uh, however, the, the whole reason that we bother, you know, going to the extra effort of setting up a vector store and storing the right documents and querying it correctly is because LLMs have a language cutoff issue. Um, you know, chat GPT-4 was is up to its uh, cutoff, is trained up to its cutoff date, at which point its knowledge of the world stops. So if you wanted to extend its knowledge uh, with anything that it doesn't already know, or if you wanted to go deeper in a given area and make sure that your uh, chatbot or your agent is going to be an expert in that material, then you need to assist it essentially. And uh, vector stores are an excellent uh, thing to pair with this um, type of setup because they are able to do semantic similarity searches so that they're uh, looking for results that are actually semantically similar, not just naively text matching. Uh, and they're also extremely performant. So like a Pinecone um, IO database can return these uh, these queries in, in milliseconds. And so it's it's not going to add any perceivable lag overall to the, the overall process of answering the question. But in essence, what we do is we, um, we turn our query or user query into an embedding. We can send that embedding to our vector store, pull back all of the relevant um, documents based off semantic search. So if we were to ask, you know, a factual question such as what happened during Halloween, that query gets parsed uh, into an embedding, it gets sent into the vector store, the vector store will return all the relevant contextual documents that are similar. Um, and so at that point, we feed those documents into the LLM in the in the actual prompt. So in our prompt, we might have a, a prompt that says you are a chatbot, uh, you are Michael Scott, and you answer questions about the office. Uh, we also would pass to it, you know, you have contextual um, hints, basically that are available to you. These are these documents that are coming back. And so at runtime, essentially, when our question is being answered, the LLM will have access to the relevant uh, documents. So all about Halloween, for example, memorable events that occurred on Halloween, and then the LLM is able to do the final synthesis into an answer using that context. Um, this is the same basic architecture that I used for this app, and it worked quite well. 
let's quickly talk through uh, why I decided to use Jupyter Notebooks at all. Um, first, Firstly, I was excited to play around with them because I've never used them. Um, secondly, if you, you look over here, this is uh, the full app, which is using a uh, Purcell template. So if you're not familiar, uh, Purcell publishes these templates. This one's called AI Chatbot. Uh, here we go. Basically this one. Um, so I grabbed this template and uh, it was great. Started to use it, needed to modify it a bit. But even though I'm starting with a template, there's still web development work. It's, it's unavoidable. Um, and so really what I wanted to do uh, especially once I realized that, you know, the data quality is really paramount to the success of this project in order to get the AI chatbot to respond in like a plausible way that seems like it's very factually up on all the context for the, the show. Um, and I thought that was just an interesting use case to kind of proxy for any chatbot that needs to be trained on a corpus of material and then answer factually for that corpus of material. Um, so in essence, once I realized that, you know, data quality is paramount, these Jupyter Notebooks are really a means for me to iterate more quickly. So to get a tighter feedback loop and only operate on my data if needed. So this entire Office Wiki Parser Notebook is just about scraping the Office Wikipedia uh, or Wiki site, storing the data in local files, flat files, loading those flat files, you know, extracting the data as necessary from each one, and then uh, embedding them, converting them into em embeddings after splitting them, right? Using OpenAI's uh, embedding engine. And then once we have the embeddings, inserting them in a Pinecone database with uh, the correct metadata as well. And so you'll notice like, that's, that's it. That's the end of this notebook. And so what this enabled me to do, and then separately on the other side for testing, I have this Office Oracle DB test book, as I call it. Uh, it. Does a lot of similar things, does the same setup here. If we step into it and edit, we'll be able to see it a little bit more clearly. But uh, has the same concept of using secrets to get the OpenAI API key and the Pinecone API key uh, out of the environment without having to um, store them because I was gonna open source this. Uh, I've got this nice little test here where I just ask any arbitrary question uh, convert my query into an embedding right here, and then directly query my Pinecone index uh, to try and get back responses and then see just a spot check because uh, they would come out here below the cell. So I can sanity check that the results coming back are more or less, you know, sen sensible, like they make sense in the, according to the query. So this is all about um, once I was operating just in data mode, iterating more quickly and then getting a tighter feedback loop to get the data quality to, to be what I needed it to be. Um, so after that kind of sanity check, I also install Langchain and Sentence Transformers. And then I can ask uh, more complex questions and do a similarity search against uh, my existing Pinecone uh, vector DB. And then ultimately I can wrap all of this in a Langchain, what's called a retrieval QA uh, chain. And that uh, really uses OpenAI under the hood and uses the model that I uh, specify, which in this case I'm using uh, ChatGPT 3.5 uh, Turbo 16K for extra context window. Um, chain type stuff, which means I want you to retrieve the documents out of this vector store. And then um, I want you to stuff them into the context window that's passed into the actual model itself. So you can see that uh, retriever here, this database set up here, uh, which is a Pinecone vector database is used as a retriever. And so in just these few lines of code, thanks to Langchain, um, we're able to actually do a complex query here and then get back, you know, uh, high quality answers. Um, and just for a sanity check, I'll, I'll run this whole thing so that you can see that it works. Um, but uh, this, Combined, so this is one side of the data science pipeline, if you will. It's like the testing, the QA desk or QA bench. And then this is the upsert or, uh, you know, scrape all the data I need and then create it and put it in the database. So I found this to be a really useful pattern um, because again, I can just focus on the data quality, operate on the data as I wish, 
and then when I'm confident that uh, everything is actually working properly and then I'm getting back the results that I want to get back, um, then it was easier to go over here into app land and actually, you know, do the normal uh, web development arm wrestling that's always involved with launching any application. Um, it just, uh, it's a nice separation of concerns in order to get the model and data working perfectly and be able to query them and test that, um, you know, in a, in a, a lower fidelity uh, format that I don't have to rebuild the entire app and worry about JavaScript imports and, you know, TypeScript syntax, et cetera, to try and get at a query. It's just really quickly I can uh, sanity check that the results that come back are, uh, make sense for what I'm asking. Uh, which they appear to here. And then lower down, we have the example uh, that I demonstrated here where it I start wrapping the actual Pinecone database that contains all of the uh, Office Wikipedia stuff in more complex queries and then pass both the results documents, these retrieve docs, uh, and the prompts into Langchain. And so you can see now, if we say list some dangerous situations Dwight has caused, uh, which would require knowledge of the entire uh, season's corpus or, you know, series corpus, if you will. Um, we get some correct answers. Dwight's actions could have burned down the building. He started a you know, fire. He was mutilating a CPR dummy. He nearly suffocated Clark with shrink wrap. He attempts to ride a bicycle across a tightrope and uh, endangers himself, right? So all of these are uh, able to be successfully retrieved from the vector data store thanks to semantic search where the embeddings, uh, the user's query is converted into an embedding. The embedding is sent to the vector database. The semantically similar contextual results are retrieved. And then those are all fed into the LLM uh, along with the actual prompt that says, you know, list some dangerous situations Dwight has caused. And you get back a, a pretty sensible answer that appears to have been written by somebody that was there or who has perfect knowledge of the whole corpus of information, which was the goal essentially. Right, that's it for this initial intro video. Thanks so much for watching. Um, stick around because in the next follow-up videos, I'll be going deeper on uh, the first trial and error that I experienced in, in trying to get the right data together for this app, uh, what I learned about that and how I eventually arrived at the correct um, uh, pattern and, and sufficient data quality to get back accurate answers. Um, I'm also going to do a deep dive on the Next.js app itself and walk through the code there to explain how it works, what modifications I needed to make, um, and some things I learned there as well.